Hey there everyone, it's Baka here. Welcome to episode number 14 of the Wide World of Geek, where today we're going to have what I'd like to consider a public service announcement, public service announcement to all you geeks and nerds out there. Now the reason I'm having this special episode, I guess you could call it, is recently there have been a number of issues in the definition of geeks and nerds um yeah i guess that's a good way of saying it now on youtube there are two different channels that are somewhat tied together one is the nerdist channel run by chris hardwick and the other is geek and sundry run by felicia day now there is a show on the nerdist channel called tournament of nerds that gives this definition of a nerd, and I believe it works just as equally well for geeks. And it's a nerd is a person who is passionate about a specific subject. Now that's all they are using to define what a nerd is. I'm fine with this. Um, in fact, I would say passionate is the key term. So, I would describe myself as a comic book geek. I have been for years. I'm an art geek. I am a reading, a literature geek. I'm also what I would consider a sports geek. Now, yes, I do consider people who are passionate about sports to be geeks or nerds in that genre of topic. Now, most people would just say, oh, they're just jocks. I don't mean, you know, the guys who use sports as an excuse to party and get drunk. And yeah, they're going to watch this game of brutality uh, or skill as they do this. I'm talking about those of us who watch sports for the sport, for the strategy involved, for the uh, sense of team, for the the game itself and what it does. Now, I have always loved sports. I played soccer for 15 years. I went to a college that ended up winning the national championship in soccer two years while I was there, and then most years since. I'm wearing their shirt right now, which is complete coincidence. It just happens to be College Go Week at my school, and we were allowed to wear college clothes today. Um, anyway, so, I love soccer. I love football. If my school, if my high school would have had a football team, I would have probably played football instead of soccer. I grew up watching Notre Dame football, going to games, absolutely love it. I'm a Colts fan, I'm an Irish fan. For basketball, I'm a Pacers fan in the NBA. And even though I'm not a big baseball fan, I do consider myself a Cubs fan. You're noticing a regional thing going on here. That's my region. Um, and I love these games for the games themselves. You know, it's not just, I like Peyton Manning, so I'm going to be a Colts fan. Oh, now I'm a Broncos fan. No. I love watching what the teams do, what the game is like, and how teams adapt to, diff to different situations. It's the same thing as when you play a video game. If you think about that, when you're playing a strategy video game, let's say you're playing StarCraft 2, it's one opponent against another, or it's one team against another, and you've got to alter your style of gameplay in order to match the skill of your opponent and eventually best the skill of your opponent and win. It's the same thing with sports. It's a game. Board games, video games, sports. They're all just different types of games. So do I think you can be a sports geek or a sports nerd? Absolutely. And I don't just mean those people who study statistics, because that's a stats nerd. That's a math nerd. That's a totally different thing. Um, so, yeah. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up, not only because I feel that sports are kind of maligned in the nerd and geek community, uh, a recent episode of Tabletop with Will Wheaton, they were given a question about a sport, and everybody got it wrong, 
and they all basically bash sports. Now I love tabletop. I love anything Will Wheaton is doing. But this kind of struck a chord with me. Now, the other main reason I'm even bringing up this topic was I read an article online today about the new Sherlock Holmes show, Elementary. This stars Johnny Lee Miller, Johnny Lee Miller as a modern-day Sherlock with Lucy Liu as a modern-day Watson, Dr. Watson. Now, in this case, it's Joan Watson instead of John Watson. But it is a, it's just a modern interpretation of a classic character. They're not remaking the old stories by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. It's something completely new. Um, and with the popularity of Sherlock Holmes, both with the movies and with the uh, television show on BBC, it's a good time for it. We had zombies, everything was zombies, now everything seems to be Sherlock Holmes. Now, I'm going to pull up this article because there is a quote in here by someone who I think everyone could probably call a nerd. Where is it? Huh. It's gone. Let me see if it's down here. I'm on foxnews.com if you can find this. <clears throat> I don't care about Madonna, or Lady Gaga, or Miley Cyrus. Here we go. So the uh, headline of this article is, Will new tattooed drug-addicted TV version of Sherlock Holmes turn off diehard fans? So they, they go into talking about how Johnny Lee Miller's character has got four different tattoos, including a sleeve tattoo on his arm, and that he's... You know, he starts out, the whole show starts out, he's, he is released from rehab. The tattoos, I don't care about its modern day interpretation. The drug addiction makes perfect sense. Sherlock Holmes was an opium addict. Or, he, well, the character of Sherlock Holmes was an opium, ad, opium addict. They don't make direct reference to it in the, in the Robert Downey Jr. movies, but it really appears that he's high most of the time. <clears throat> He's always experimenting with different concoctions and herbs and things. Anyway, the point I want to make with this article is they interview two different people from a group called the Baker Street Irregulars. It's an invitation only. There are 350 members, and they're die-hard Sherlock Holmes fans. And when I say diehard, I mean they make normal nerds and geeks look docile and, you know, non-passionate. These guys are psychotic in their passion, usually. Um, taking it just to a whole other level. One guy says, <clears throat> um, if the story is good, we will all overlook all the other stuff. As long as Sherlock and Watson are the focus, I will ignore the other stuff. A few might take exception, though. So one of their members says, Hey, if the story's good, if it stays true to the characters, bully for them. I can overlook the gender change, the relocation to New York City, the modern-day aspect of it. However, there was another member of this group that was also... Uh, interview, and this is a woman from Chicago, a tra Holmes traditionalist. This is what how her quote starts out. I think Robert Downey should be shot. He's destroyed Sherlock Holmes. He's turned him into a Victorian Iron Man. The plots are ludicrous. It's all action and explosions. I will agree that the plots to the two Sherlock Holmes movies are a little on the ridiculous side. But so were the plots to Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's books. The same person goes on to say, The Sherlock Holmes books are one of the few mystery series you can read again and again. Doyle is not good, is not that good a writer, but he created an incredible character. Absolutely true. Sherlock Holmes is an amazing character. Sir Arthur Conan Doyle wasn't that great of a writer. His plots were 
on the ridiculous side. So is the movie. So is this new TV show. Even, to an extent, the BBC show. It's a tech-heavy show. It's a Victorian steampunky tech-heavy type show. But to start off by saying Robert Downey should die, should be shot. I'm sorry. She does not say Robert Downey should be should die. She says Robert Downey should be shot. Um, it's ridiculous. Robert Downey played an amazing Sherlock Holmes. He captured that character, the quirky, crazy, inventive, drug-addled, uh, hyper-aware character. He did a great job. It doesn't require you to be so vehement in your passion for a specific topic to go nerd rage on somebody because of a, plot, a part they played, because of a character they portrayed. You know, there's nerd and geek, and then there's nerd rage. Nerd rage can be scary because, let's face it, there's a lot of nerds and geeks out there who don't have the best people skills. So when they go off the deep end, and they don't have the people skills, look out. Anyway, so that's my little rant on that. Now, it's been 11 and a half minutes, and I'm going to let you guys go. This was my public service announcement on the nature of nerds and geeks. You can be a sports geek. You can be a nerd-raging geek. You can be a, a geek or a nerd with any topic you want. Be passionate about it. Just don't be, you know, passionate beyond reason. Anyway. I hope to have a weekend workshop update this week, so stay tuned. I will, If not, I will see you guys next Tuesday for another Wide World of Geek. This is Baca, saying goodbye.